I'm very blessed to have four sons, and uh, each one of them really gets me out for dinner, food all the time in a week. They take their turn to bless me. And yesterday was my youngest boy, Samuel, Janice, and the two grandchildren. Uh, they have arranged with me and say we will go to Callumville Hotel for our dinner, early dinner. So he said, Dad, what are you going to do uh, be before we go for dinner? I said, let's go for a walk. He said, let's go, for a, go to the park and go for a walk. I said, yeah, that sounds good. I said, let's go for a walk at about 4.45, and then we have our dinner. Anyway, when they arrived into the park, they called me up and said, we are already in the park. So I drove out. It's just outside my house, and I just joined them. And wonderful to see my grandson was running towards me as soon as he saw me, Jedi Dyer. That's the one in the front needs to be carried. <laughs> and so he ran forward, he came over to me. So I told him, we are going to the hotel. He said, yeah, we are going to the hotel for dinner. He knew about it. And then he says, so I asked him, are you hungry? He said, I said, do you want to eat steak or fish? He said, I will tell you my choice when I go to a hotel. <laughs> I was amazed by him. I was really amazed by him, three-year-old boy, talking like a big adult. <laughs> he said, I, I will let you know when, when we are in the hotel. Anyway, when we arrive in the hotel, he ordered pizza. <laughs> <laughs> One of the afternoons, I was also again back in the house, uh, and uh, before I go to sleep, that's my usual habit, especially after lunch. And I sat there in front of the television, and I turned it on, and, and it turns out to be into the, a conference or a seminar where two great men on the earth you all know Elon Musk, and the other one was Alibaba, Jack Ma. They were having a, a seminar. I think it's in China. It was held in China. And there were questions coming up for both of them to answer. Ultimately, when I sat there to listen to them, each one of them, they are so diversified. And uh, Elon Musk was always talking about interplanet. He was always designing spaceship or space rockets to go to interspace. In fact, he has actually created a rocket and brought things right to the satellites. He's probably one of the first commercial person who have done that. Young man, Elon Musk. And Alibaba was, on the other hand, was saying that my concentration is on this earth. I want to do everything I can do or the people on this earth. So both of them are different. Both of them have their viewpoints. Both of them have their own vision. They are brilliant. And uh, after the show, I went back. And uh, at night, as I was lying on the bed, before I sleep, I was just reflecting. And suddenly, as I was reflecting about them, you know, that God gave me a verse in Matthew 24, verse 35. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Amen. As that word came, I knew that what the Lord was trying to say to me, despite all the greatness of everyone on this earth, one fine day, we all have to go. Yeah. And it's good to appreciate them for their greatness, for their brilliance while they are on this earth. So as I was thinking about all this, he said, my word will never pass away. To me, as I was thinking further upon those words, in other words, the word of God is relevant whatever time you live in. If you can live as long as you can live. That word of God is relevant. That word of God has no timeline. In other words, it's not hindered by whatever schedule of events on this earth. That word of God is always relevant to every one of us. There are 
three things on this earth that cannot be shaken. The kingdom of God in Hebrews chapter 12 says it cannot be shaken. The second one is the word of God. Word of God can never be shaken. And the third group is people. Even after rapture, there are still people on this earth. Right? So three groups of things cannot be shaken. I, I was, in fact, I started two weeks ago talking about confessing the word of God. I was thinking, for the Christians, I was thinking about Christians, thinking about myself too. The people of the world have achieved, have a reason to the heights of what they can do in their potentiality, the immensity of their influence on this earth. Elon Musk came out from a, you know, sometimes we say to ourselves, we come from a fragmented family. Came from a split family. Dad and mom split up, divorced, separated. Elon Musk was a, born in South Africa, an American. At 10 years old, dad and mom separated. Father was a wealthy African engineer, and uh, mom was a very brilliant model. I think she must have followed mom back into the States or into Canada. And a young man of that kind started tremendous exploits for his age. Alibaba, you all know Jack Ma, or they call it Ma Yun, his Chinese name. Very poor, come from a very poor family. Out of 24 applicants for KFC, all the 23 accepted, he was rejected. He failed twice to enter to the university entrance exam. And praise be to God, he emerged after all these things with all the technology, with all the internet, he became so brilliant. And God really blessed him. I use the word God. Now, because the Bible says in Genesis, we are all created in the image of God. You believe? We all are. We are all created, you know, to take dominion and so forth. So I was thinking about ourselves, Christians. Sometimes we blame our environment. Sometimes we blame our, um, our background. We were poor. We were this, we were that, we were this, we were that. These are two men out of their own personal family life are considered adverse condition. But they have a reason out of their environment. How much more we Christians, when we are born again, how much God in us that we can really press forward. Can you say amen? amen. I want, really want to encourage you. I'm encouraging myself. I'm already 72 young. You know, and I'm encouraging myself. I think compared to all this, not that we are having to compare with them. Each one of us has our own field of endeavor. Our own field of competence. But one thing I want to encourage you is that we have this the word of the living God everything can pass away but this word never pass away I started two weeks ago talking about we are entering into a time that God wants us to confess the word of God I say for 10 years we are in, it was in a stage of that God allowed us to see, to have a vision, to have a revelation. But on the 30th of September this year, we are entering into a new calendar year in a Hebrew calendar. But God wants us to speak, open our mouth wide. I like the word, open your mouth wide and I will fill you. I was always relating to food. But we can speak the word of God. I want to begin today, I want to reiterate something to you and then I want to share with you something that you probably have not heard from the Bible that will encourage you. I mean, few events have happened since that night after hearing what they call that, uh, that conference 
the seminar, I was like stirred up by the Holy Spirit myself. I was on the bed myself. I was stirred up within myself and said, Lord, that definitely must be much more than what I am here at the moment. Much more that you have for me to do. The potentiality, your nature in me, the capability, the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth in Christ bodily and I'm complete in you. Must mean so much. The creativity of God is in me. Because he's a creative God. Can you say amen? He's an innovative God. Healthy, wealthy. He's everything. He controls everything. And he lives inside me. But I hardly have touch. Just a little percentage. I wouldn't even consider a percentage. When I was stirred up, I began to look at myself and begin to use the word of God and declare who I am in Him. I began to confess the word of God right within myself. I began to think, to meditate on the word of God within myself. And as soon as I meditate on some of those things, within that same week, people begin to call me this and that and this and that. Suddenly, people have been blessed and they come to bless me. When I spoke the word of God and I declare the word of God. I want to say to you, the word of God is so alive and powerful. Like Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 say, It's a life. That's why I say we are both natural and spiritual people. If you already study the word of God, you find Jesus say, my words are life and my words are spirit unto you. What was Jesus talking about? He was not talking in reference to our human being. He was talking in another dimension of the spirit world. Right? Where Paul says to you and myself in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, he says, Unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that what you ask or think, according to the power that worketh inside you. All these men of God are addressing the spirit world. For you and I to understand there's so much more of the spirit world than just the natural world. When I began to meditate on the scriptures, it just made me so feel like, wow, we have not entered into it yet. That's what Joshua said, salvation is just the beginning. There's so much more that you and I can arise from yourself. Whether you are young or you are old, as you meditate on the word of God, it's relevant for you and for me. Relevant for a 72-2 or young person or my grandson, three years old. The word of God is so powerful, beloved. And you really need to know that there's no other books like this book. And you need to spend so much time really meditating on the scriptures and believing in your heart and speak it out. Amen? Let's turn to Romans 10, please. I want to begin and just... We want to go on. I know that uh, all these are very familiar, but it's repetition and forces learning. It's always good to repeat again and again and again and again until those words become real in your life and in my life. Can you say amen? amen. Romans 10, as I said two weeks ago, how do you know you are safe? How do you know that you are born again? And Romans 10 says this in verse 8, But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10, For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, 
Confession is made unto salvation. Heart and mouth must always operate together. Can you say amen? What you believe in your heart, you need to speak it out. You need to confess. I want to introduce this morning a scripture that I believe very few of you probably must have read or skipped that book of Philemon. I want you to turn with me to Philemon chapter 1, verse 6. It's only one chapter, by the way, and verse 6. Philemon, you can read back the story, only one chapter about Onesimus, the slave of Philemon. Working halfway, he must have stolen some money and then escaped and came into Rome. <laughs> Incidentally, or God designed him to be beside, caught into the jail beside Paul. They have to chain, chain together every day and I believe that he was saved. And he was released, and Paul sent him back to Philemon. Anyway, that was the background. And verse 6 says this, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. I want to paraphrase that, my own paraphrase. Uh, I want to read my paraphrase. The sharing of of my faith or your faith, the speaking of your faith or my faith will become effective, activated, energized, make into reality by declaring the good things which are in you or in me in Christ Jesus. I want to read one more time. And I want to elaborate on this particular verse to show you how important for you, beloved, as Christians, that you really need to meditate on the Word of God. You know, when a word is spoken to you, as I say, prophesied to you, in 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13, say, when you receive the Word of God, you did not receive it as a word from man. You received it as the Word of God, the Word of truth. And when you receive it, you find that it, if, when you believe, it effectively works within you. When you receive the Word of God and you believe it in your life, it effectively works in you. The reality of God's Word begins to make manifest. When you believe, when you receive, when you activate it, when you meditate and activate, action comes, things happen. This word here is not a storybook. His word is a life. His word a spirit unto you. It's relevant in another 50 years' time. If you, many of us are in 50 more years. I thought that when a prophet, prophetess prophesied to me that God is going to give you 20 more years as you go out and preach. I thought at least I was thinking 20 years. My Isaac probably must have married I probably will see my great-grandson or great-granddaughter. Beloved, when the word of God comes to you, just don't just listen to it, bypass it, but take it. Believe it. That's why whenever I sit down here through, a, through like a school of ministry, whenever I hear the word, I write it down, I go home in front of my computer, type it down onto my computer, print it out, read it, Print it out, keep it in my pocket, especially at night, on my bed. I look at it again. I think about it again. Meditate it again. Try to absorb everything from the Word of God. Try to memorize it deep within my heart and my mind so that I could speak it anytime. I could use it anytime. Amen? Now, let me show you the relevance of it from these scriptures. So let me read one more time, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, as I paraphrase it again. The sharing of your faith, or my faith, that means the speaking or the confession of your faith, will become effective, activated, energized, make into reality by declaring the good things which are in me or in you in Christ Jesus. You believe that? 
Confession always precedes possession. In the spiritual kingdom, confessing the word brings you to possess. The power to possess is by confessing. Amen? You see, I am who God say I am. How many of you ever say to yourself like that? I am who God say I am. It doesn't matter what my background was, how fragmented my life before, how poor I was, doesn't matter. Because when Christ comes to you, you are totally different. When you are born again, in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, when Christ comes into you, you are a new creation. In other words, you start to have a new nature. You start to have a new future. You start to have a new beginning. You believe? So when Christ comes into you, you got a nature of God. There's no limit to it. Nothing can stop the nature of God. Sorry to use, you are superwoman. You are superman in Christ. The capacity is unlimited. That's why in Psalm 48, Psalm 78 verse 41, God said, don't limit me. Don't limit me. He is so big and he's able to perform his life through you. Sometimes we diminish, we use our own thinking and diminish and limit God. True? Sometimes we, we think, ah, I cannot be. But beloved, God is wanting you to begin to think big, if I were to use the word. Can you say amen? To be, begin to believe him. He has so much for you and so much for me. Whatever circumstance you face, the word of God can change the whole situation. You believe, you confess, things start to change. I say two weeks ago that when I was born again, the Lord wrote into my spirit, Nagev, the just shall live by faith. I've never seen all that whole sentence, never seen it in my English vocabulary. Negev, N-E-G-E-V. I don't know where this place is. Went to Britannica Encyclopedia and there was a word like that inside there, talking about Israel land and how in the end time that land became populous, populated. That's why when we bought this land, when the Lord gave us this land, I call it Negev. The just shall live by faith. So many times in the Bible, when you are young, you have not read the Bible. You see, God can speak to you years before time. And He's still developing it. Still developing it. What God wants to do with this land, I still do not know. But when Dr. Bruce was with me in the car, when I brought him out for, or when I brought him back to the hotel to rest, he says, when he came into the car, into my van, he says, there's so much land here. Then he says that, Pastor Sim, you should ask for a premium price for these two pieces of land. And then ask them, the developer, to give you a place of worship together with it. I thought that was a good idea. Ask for a premium price for these two pieces of land. At the same time, that they will be willing to give you a sanctuary where you can worship God. I don't know. I thought it was a good idea. What God has for us is, I believe, when revival happens in Australia, we got a part to play. God has provided the land. In every revival in the history of the world, God provides land first. Provide space first. Prepare for what is coming. Can you say amen? All we do is just love God. Pray. He will lead us when the time comes. Can you say amen? That all of us can rejoice that what God has blessed us. Amen? In the coming days, at the moment, there's nothing that has been spoken by the Lord into my heart and my mind. But that doesn't mean that I'm not open to whatever. I'm as interested as many of you always asking me, Pastor Sim, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? I appreciate that. Please understand, I appreciate that. 
but I need to hear from God myself because I dare not move anywhere without God giving me or speaking to me. You understand? Hope you understand. Confession rules. Nothing will be as Nothing will establish us and build our faith as quickly as confession. Let me say one more time. Nothing will establish us and build our faith as quickly as confession. In 1 Timothy 6 verse 12, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many weaknesses. Let me just paraphrase it. Nothing will establish you and build your faith as quickly as confession. The good fight of faith requires a good confession. Can you say amen? The enemy will leave. Is the word of God is the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit. As you continue to confess the word of God and you believe in your heart, they have to go. Can you say amen? <laughs> Nothing will come against you when you declare what God say about you, amen. what his son has done for you. Acknowledgement or declaration of every good thing in Christ Jesus. I just share with you about Romans 10 verse 10. You got a new nature a new future, a new beginning, a new destiny. Some of you are saying to yourself today, I want to begin again. I want to start new again. Come back to Christ. Can you say amen? amen. He is inside you and he's going to give you a new nature. As you meditate on the word of God, you have a new nature, a new future, a new beginning and a new destiny. Amen? He's already inside you as you confess. When you are born again, you need to understand you are totally different. Don't go back to where you came from, who you were. Believe what Jesus has done for you. Begin to change your thinking by the word of God. Begin to confessing it into your life. There's much, much more of God in every one of us. Don't sit back and say, and become complacent that I have arrived. Please. I don't know about you. I told you I'm 72 young. I have never thought of that I have arrived. I always feel that I don't know anything. And that's the truth. That's not humility. Every time they ask me to preach, I say to God, I don't know anything. And that's true. I have to come back to God. The dependency is on him all the time. I couldn't use back what the Lord has taught me, but I want to be where God wants me to be, what God wants me to share. I have to seek him. I have to wait upon him. I have to hear him, what he wants me to share. That's an honest confession. Two weeks ago, I came out and said, I don't know what to share. But when I start sharing, I cannot finish. <laughs> That's true. I mean, nothing to boast about is the Holy Spirit will start to drop in. Start beginning to download what he wants me to speak. I encourage you, beloved. Now, this is just the beginning on the iceberg. Are you ready? He never stopped speaking. Every day in my house, or when I'm walking, or I'm in, sitting down here, you know what I say to myself? You probably didn't know what I'm talking. I'm talking to myself every day in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30. God you have made Jesus to be my wisdom, my righteousness, my sanctification, and my redemption. i just thinking about it. While I'm here, I'm walking around, out there, back home, 
when I sit in front of a television, that words keep on coming true. God, you have made Jesus to be my wisdom, my righteousness, my sanctification, and my redemption. God, I can do all things, all things, because you strengthen me to do. Can you say amen? Many times I'm thinking within myself the word of God that I'm not natural. I want to live, seek things above, beyond to go instead of the natural. Can you say amen? How many of you are, I better don't use the word. How many of you want financial breakthrough or spiritual breakthrough in your life? in your family, your business, your children, your ministry, speak the word. One of my favorite verses for 30 over years is Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. Remember the Lord your God, who is the one that gives you the power to get wealth. That word power is the ability, I put in wisdom, to get wealth. God is the one that gives you the power to produce wealth. God is the one that gives you the power to create wealth. How many of you know that wealth can be created? That's why I often say to many businessmen, your ability to earn is limited. I say, don't get offended by Pastor Sim. Because when you start to meditate on the Word of God, He has that capacity. God has the capacity to create wealth. Can you say amen? And the currency in the kingdom of God is not money. Currency in the kingdom of God is what did God say to you? That's faith. Over my 30 over years, I've stopped practicing as a dentist. Not that I was lazy. But God has blessed us until today. With four sons and four beautiful daughters-in-law and nine grandchildren. We have never lacked to God be the glory. I'm not work, not that I'm lazy to work, but God has supplied according to what the word of God say. I believe, I declare, every day I declare. And that's why God has started to use me to teach on finance everywhere. Not because I'm smart, no, nothing. I'm worse than many of you. But the word of God, always inside me, day and night, is like bubbling inside me, quickened by the Holy Spirit through my mind, through my speaking, through my thinking, I'm dwelling on the word of God. I hope you can be encouraged this way. You need finance, just speak the word of God. He has already given you the power. Can you say amen? Speak it. Don't be shy. If you don't want your wife to hear, you can go to another room and speak the word. You know? That's what I do. My wife, every morning, wakes up. She goes to another room. I have my own room. Each one of us has our devotion. Today, I'm alone by myself. I speak the word. At night, before I sleep, through it, do something, I'm up. Go through it. For something, wake up again, go through it. Sometimes don't feel like coming to church. Speak the word. Instead of thinking this, thinking that, thinking all sorts of things, get your heart and mind be so deeply rooted in Christ and His word. I believe that's the breakthrough. That's the breakthrough you want. You want to see a change in your family, change in your relationship, change in whatever you want, in your business world, whatever. This word of God is relevant to you. God has never given us things that are so difficult for us to achieve. God has said the word is just nigh you. You just speak it out. From your mouth, from your heart, just speak it out.
God is so wonderful. He told Joshua, when you conquer the land, he never given him any atomic bomb. Just say, meditate on the word of God and you will be a success. Amen? Everybody has the accessibility to God. Every one of us start from groundwork the same. Nobody is more superior in that sense. You look at Jack Ma, you know, Elon Musk. They come from very difficult background, but they have pressed through and overcome. How much more we have Christ in us? How much more we have the nature of God in us? And whatever you do, you want to be on the cutting edge. You want to be, not because of anything, to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Bless by God. Blessing always gives us the ability to help other people. It's not just for our own selfish gain. I've never prayed this way. You know, I, I don't know whether to share with you. I said, Lord, all my accounts, I call in millions to come into my accounts. For what? Probably develop this place or whatever thing that God wants to do. It's never for me to use because I don't need all the money. All I need is, please give me some bread to eat, some nice food to eat. That's my delight only. That's not a thing I, I want. But I call in millions to come true. And I've done that before, and it has come. And this is your own way to begin to meditate on the world. Can you say amen? Our purpose is we are blessed to be a blessing. When you got that sort of purpose, understanding the kingdom heart and mind, then God will continue to release to you. He's not afraid to bless you. As long as you and I will know how to steward everything that he has given to you. Amen? God has no limit. As I said to you, his word is relevant for you. Everything can pass away, but his word will never pass away. Every circumstance have to change. That's why I never hear bad news. Thank God I got no, 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 what do you call that? No Telstra now to see news. My news is in the Bible. It's always good news. Meditate on what God says. Don't worry about what's happening out there. God can change our environment. In fact, next year we're so busy so busy, invitation came from the states, came from everywhere. I want to share when I was a young man, I'm still young. Psalm 2 verse 8 says, ask of me the hidden for my inheritance. Nations unto the uttermost parts of the world for my possession. That was actually speaking to the Lord Jesus Christ. God asked his son Jesus to ask. Ask of me, the hidden, for your inheritance and nations of the uttermost parts of the world for your possession. When I was a young man in the Lord, I always read that scripture and I ask, Lord, give me the hidden for my inheritance and nations unto the uttermost parts of the world for my possession. And God continued to open doors every year, opening more doors, more nations for me to go out to share. Can you say amen? You ask, do you believe that in your heart? For what purpose? Not for me to possess people, but that people will hear about the gospel, will hear about Jesus, will hear about the word of God. And that's the purpose of asking. Asking that people will be blessed. Can you say amen? Through your life, that you are an ambassador for Christ. Don't stay satisfied at the complacency level. Don't stay at the level of indifference. Don't stay and keep on looking at yourself that you have arrived. Please don't. Apostle Paul said, I strive. I have not arrived. I keep on pressing forward to the upward and high calling of God. He has never stopped. He was brought up to the third heavens and still say, I'm still pressing forward. I want to know you, Jesus. 
to know the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your sufferings. Conform unto death. He was keep on pressing forward. He has never stopped. I think all of us need to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? And keep on saying, come on, let's go. Don't stop. Don't lay back. And don't say, oh, no, I'm happy with myself. All what I have. No, no, no. That's not the way to live, beloved. You are the saddest person to live like that. No meaning. That's why in the seven churches, in the Laodicea church, he said, I don't need anything. And that is the saddest mistake they have ever made. They don't need anything. They have everything. Even though you have a lot of things, but still lean on him. Depend on him every day. Trust him with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all things, acknowledge him and he will direct your steps. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear God and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh, strength to your bones. When I went, went to cruise with Joshua, after seven days, was it seven days? That's all. These few verses were imprinted into me. He was swimming. He was... <laughs> but I was in the room. God was speaking to me, Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 8. When I came out from the cruise, I thought I was richer by the verses. <laughs> I was good. Now the verses are all inside me already. Trust him with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all things, acknowledge him. He will direct your steps. Do you believe? Whatever things, he will direct your steps. Don't do it your own ways. Don't do your own ways. Please, trust him. His way is better than our ways. He can see better than us. He can see the future in you and in me. We do not know what's going to happen tomorrow. But God knows. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear God and depart from evil. It will be fresh to your body. It will be strength to your flesh. It will be health to your flesh, sorry, and strength to your bones. How many of you want strong bones? How many of you got backache? I think that's two, those scriptures are for you to meditate. Fear God and depart from evil. You will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Can you say amen? Do you love God? I know you all love God. Our purpose here has more lasting effect than just coming to church. I always believe, I mean I love numbers, but more important is I love lives in Christ. We want to press on to the finish line. Can you see amen? We want to finish. That's it. We want to be used by God in whatever capacity that God has raised you up to be. Don't be satisfied with ourselves and say, I have enough. No, no. You don't have enough. God got still some more for you. Don't stop it yourself. Don't diminish the intervention of God for your own life. You need to press on. You must unlock your own mind and say, Lord, I want more of you every day. Amen? So, ultimately, is this lean on God. Can you say amen? amen? Don't lean on your own understanding. Trust God that he will give you the best. Will you stand with me, please? When you go home, can you please spend some time with the Word? I know you do. But not only read the Word, but meditate the Word. Think it over and over and over. Exhaust everything that God has written for you. Can you say amen? And then begin to live in it. Begin to apply that into your life. Amen? God will surely wants to bless you. God wants to... As you delight in the Lord, he will give you the delight, the desires of your heart. So delight in the Lord. Don't 
Don't keep on coming to God that I want a wife, I want this. Just delight in the Lord. Just enjoy God. Just love the Lord. And He will know when to give you if He wants you to have. If not, you are still happy. Can you say amen? You are still blessed in God. Father, we thank you for this morning. I thank you for my family here. I thank you, God, that you understand each one of our feelings, desires, situations that we are facing. Father, I pray for breakthrough this morning, for every life, for their family, for their situations, for their business, for their works. Financial breakthrough, health breakthrough, every situation right now this morning. Father, we want to believe every word that you have spoken. And we want to meditate on every word. As we continue to confess our faith, you will energize us. You will be effective. You will activate us to see the reality of the confession of your word. We thank you, Lord. We want to acknowledge and we want to declare all the good things that you have given to us in Christ Jesus. I pray for breakthrough after breakthrough for every person here. That there is nothing too hard for you and all things are possible that believe. We believe you, Lord. As you have raised up people from the circular world, from the outside world to be champions, I pray for this church. I pray for our people that you put into each one of us the desire to continue to press and touch you, Lord, to be like you, Jesus. That the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth in Christ bodily and we are complete in you. That the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth in Christ bodily and we are complete in you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That wealth and riches are in all our home, Lord, in Psalm 112. Father, your words are so powerful. I pray for all the beloved here that they will start not just read the word, but begin to believe your word and begin to meditate your word, for your words are life and spirit to every one of us. Your words are life and powerful. Your words are living and powerful. Sharper than two aged sword. They split the soul and split. So they split the soul and the spirit asunder. The discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart, Lord. Father, I pray for every person that your word will richly dwell in us in all wisdom and in all. Oh God, I thank you. Put us to love you more and more and love your word more and more. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.